Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, I am the American Canadian Gamer, and today I want to talk to you about punishing quitters and catching D-rankers in Halo 5. Now, I decided to make this video in response to Naked Eli's Halo 5 ranking system series that you can find over on his channel, and I really suggest checking it out. He makes a lot of really good points. I agree with everything that he says for the most part, and it's really worth a listen. He says a lot of really good stuff, and he knows what he's talking about. Definitely go check that out. I'll remember to put a link in the description for that. But in his most recent video, he did pose a couple of questions. How to best punish quitters? and how to catch D-rankers. Both of those are not very easy questions to answer. But I decided to sit down and make this video because I do have a couple of ideas of how to kind of approach both of those situations. And the first one that I'm going to talk about is kind of how to punish quitters. Now, it's the idea that you really want to harshly punish people for leaving a game because they're ruining the experience for the people in the game because when one team outnumbers the other, it's not fun for the team that's winning, it's not fun for the team that's losing, it sucks for everybody, and Join in Progress really didn't fix that the way that 343 probably expected it to in Halo 4. But how do you punish the people that leave, like, that rage quit without really over punishing the people that aren't leaving on purpose, the people that maybe life gets in the way, like a really important phone call just happens and they have to leave or they lose their connection. How do you not punish those people as severely while simultaneously making sure that you come down hard on the people that deserve it? And the way that I figured is to have it weighted, have a weighted punishing system. And what I mean by that is punish the people that leave more often, more severely. So let's just base it around percentages right now. Let's just for sake of argument, there may be a better way to do it. There's a lot of people that are a lot smarter than me that can probably figure it out, but let's base it around percentages. Let's say you have one guy that tries to play every game all the way through. He really sits down and commits, but occasionally his connection drops or, you know, he loses power and he has left a couple of matches. Let's say his quit ratio and his quit percentage is two or three percent. Let's say it's two or three percent. That's very low. That means out of 100 games, he maybe leaves two or three. So how much should he be punished? Probably not very much. Let's say he just loses his connection. Maybe he shouldn't be punished nearly as harshly or maybe even not at all when he goes to get back in. But let's say you take another guy who has like a 10% quit rate I think he should be punished harder than the person that has the 2% quit rate. I think maybe he should be locked out for a little bit. Maybe like how Eli mentioned with League of Legends, how you have to wait until the game that you left finished before you can enter the, another game, which I think is a great idea. I think that's a really good idea, but I think maybe if you weight the system based on the percentages or, you know, the number of games that a person leaves in any given time, that you can really punish the people who are actually just leaving matches and not punish the people who don't leave matches regularly. The people that just leave because they lose power or life gets in the way or just, you know, they lose their connection. The really simple stuff. The people that stay for 99% of their games don't get punished, but the people that stay for only 90% of their games do get punished. I think that would be a really fair system that kind of encourages the people that leave to stay in the game a little bit more and tells the people that stay in every game they can, hey, it's okay if you lose your connection, it's okay if something happens and you have to go, you're not going to be punished for it as long as you don't make a habit of leaving matches. Okay, so the next question that he posed is, how do you capture D-rankers? How do you find the people that are purposefully D-ranking, abusing the system so they can pick on the new people? How do you catch those people? And my response to that is you need to find a way to catch patterns in behavior. Essentially an algorithm, or I don't know if algorithm is the right word, I'm not really a programmer, but basically a system that detects a pattern of behavior in correlation with a streak of losses and a streak of wins. So let's say one guy loses six matches in a row to D rank, and then he wins the next three by a phenomenal amount, then loses the next few, then really wins the next few by a really good amount. And you see that pattern of he loses, but then he does really, really, really well, and then he loses, and then he does really well yet again, because he's picking on the people that aren't as good as he is. And over time, I think the system would be able to detect, hey, this guy has a pattern of his rank going down, 
and then all of a sudden he just beats the crap out of everybody he plays against, and then he loses a bunch of matches again, and then he does it all over again. Now, I don't know how best to punish a D-Ranker. I don't know really what to do with that. There's probably people out there that have much better ideas of how to handle that than I do. I mean, that's just abusing the ranking system. Maybe then you can only play in unranked after, like, say, like, you abuse the ranking system. Then, like, for the next, I don't know, 10, 20 matches, you can only play unranked. That seems kind of fair to me, but there's probably a better way than doing that. Like I said, there are people much smarter than me in the industry that could probably figure this out and really work it out in much better ways. But that's my idea develop a system that can detect a pattern of behavior that can identify if a person is purposefully losing matches and then is winning matches. So let me know what you think about that down in the comments section below and be sure to go check out Naked Eli's series on ranking. Like I said, I pretty much agree with everything that he has to say. It's a lot of really good stuff. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt and I'll see you next time.